Hello everyone and welcome. This is Raw Emotions and I am Ida Lee. Please keep liking and subscribing and sharing these videos. Let's get the word out. <laughs> um, today I, I guess I would like to talk about the bus. Um, it's been an interesting two years, year and a half uh, with this bus team. Um, you know, she had her hip surgery in February um, two years ago. Uh, I'd have to do the math, honestly, to tell you what year. It's 2018, so 2016. Um, February of 2016. <clears throat> um, and like I said, I had, you know, pulled her from school um, during December and January. Um, she, We were in the hospital almost every other weekend. Um, it, it was it was insane. It was, it was just, it was crazy. And then... It had gotten to the point to where um, I was up at her school uh, two to three times a day. Um, and it's a good 30, 35 minute drive for me to get just to her school. Um, <clears throat> so it, you know, that's how sick she was. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, I've been through a lot with her. Um, I've been through an awful lot with her. So it's hard um, you know, I don't expect everybody to take care of her the same way I do, um, obviously. You know, I'm hands-on. <laughs> I don't know really that many moms that aren't. Um, but they're out there, you know. But but I'm a hands-on mom. Um, a helicopter mom? I never thought I was a helicopter mom until her. Um, you know, I like I said, it's learning and finding my balance. Um, you know, it's it's taking a step back and, and letting others care for her. Um, and like I said, I know it's not going to be the same, and, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, the issue I have, though, is when you don't step up at all and take care of her. Um, so just some of the issues that we were having, okay, um, after, after she healed and she went back to school. So the surgery was in February. Um, she really didn't start back to school until I believe it was the first week of June. Um, and uh, it wasn't every day, like I said. It, you know, um, I want to say she was maybe only going once or twice a week, and that was me still picking her up or taking her to school, um, still being up there, you know, one to two times a day during the week. Um, so it, it was really hard, you know, um, and then, you know, I have to put her on the bus. Um, I have to let her go. You know, think of the first time when, you know, you let your baby go to preschool or to kindergarten. Um, and they ride that big yellow bus, you know. I mean, you're bawling your eyes out. <laughs> your heart's breaking, you know. I mean, I have to go through that more than just the first day of school. Um, I go through and I leave her with the respite workers. Um, it's different. It's just different. Um, so, you know, I do expect you, if you are going to take a position in special needs in this community, you do need to know what you're doing and you do need to step up and do your job. Um, you know, she started riding the bus and I've explained how she does her legs. Well, with them not really knowing her, they thought she was having a seizure, so they would call me and meet me in a parking lot to go pick her up. And finally, you know, I think it was the third or fourth time I mentioned something to the teacher, and I said, you know, is there a new protocol? Are, are we supposed to be picking the kids up? And, you know, I just offhandedly had mentioned it because I think I was dropping her off or I had picked her up or something um, in, in between one of, one of those these episodes with them. And she's like, she said, no, that's that's not new at all. Um, and you have to understand this relationship that I had with these workers, with these bus workers. Whenever I would um, address an issue that was wrong or talk to them and, and explain how it needs to be done, I was met with resistance, attitude, um, a fake smile. I don't care how you treat me. I care how you treat my daughter. And if you're going to treat me like shit, what do you treat my daughter like? And it was pretty clear. Um, yeah. How hard is it to turn on the air conditioner in a bus 
to touch a child and to make sure that they're not too hot or they're not too cold and then adjust the temperature accordingly. She has seizures. She's heat sensitive and she's cold sensitive. So we have temperature issues. It's an extremely hard balance. Um, you, you, you think you get it right and bam, you know, she's, she's too cold. You think you got it right and bam, she's too hot. It, it's a balancing act. I know. I live it every day. So again, I don't expect people to live up to my standards of care because she's my daughter. But at the same time, I do expect a certain level of care. Yeah. Um, she would come home and she would, you know, after having a rough day of seizures, um, you know, there's a couple days where she's lethargic and uh, it's all she can do, you know, to hold her head up and, and she's drooling. Adjust the bib. Move the bib over. You know, um, I started putting a, a, a Chuck's pad, a, a blue pad, um, which is basically like a, a disposable cloth you can, you know, catch, throw up or poop or whatever and you can throw it away. Chuck's pad. Uh, so I started putting those in the corner of the outside pocket of her bag. All the, the aide had to do, whip that bad boy out, put it on her lap, bam, that takes care of the drooling issue. Oh no, that was too easy. Um, let's let her come home with wet pants, okay? Wet pants. And I'm not just talking, you know, like a puddle. I'm talking about her sitting in her own saliva with her pants completely drenched. That's not okay. Um, she's come home three different times. This last time was the worst, and that's when I absolutely threw the fit. Um, her limbs have been freezing, ice cold to touch. The leg, you know, that is traumatized that had the surgery in it, that leg, when it gets cold, it, it feels like an ice cube. Um, and you can touch the rest of her body, and the rest of her body is warm to the touch. But that little leg, you got to understand, you know, there's been trauma. You know, she, she had that deep vein thrombosa. She had to have reconstructive hip surgery. You know, she had the pins and needles removed. I mean, her poor leg, her poor body, you know. And when you explain, I don't go into a ton of detail, but I just explain a little bit, you know. And it's like, let's do this to hopefully avoid this. Um, okay, okay, I got you, you know. And, and it's like I'm literally, you know, beating my head up against a brick wall. And, you know, the, the, the common thing I, I often joke about, it's like, well, you know, I'm on the floor bleeding people. Hello, you can only beat your head up against the wall so many times. And really, that's the most frustrating thing in this life. I've stated it before. No one does their jobs. The, inner, the agencies that are all supposed to help and be a community don't talk to each other. Um, it's, it's just, it boggles my mind. I, I just, I don't know. I, I just don't get it. Uh, but anyways... Um, you know, I, I know I'm not the only parent that's had issues with this bus. You know, you don't like your job, go get another one. Um, you like your job for the paycheck, that's clearly evident. Um, sorry, but... <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyways, you know, this is what happened Thursday. Um, she came home, and she just was ice cold. You know, I could tell she was freezing. And I got her out of her chair, and I laid her down, and I was changing her diaper. And I'm just starting to feel her, and it's like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And she's, you know, chattering, her teeth are chattering. And it's like, what the heck, you know, and I'm pulling her pants down, and they're just, I'm like, did she wet her diaper? You know, did she wet through? And I'm feeling her diaper, and it was, wasn't was wet. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, are you serious? I mean, you could literally almost wring those pants out, her shorts out. They were that wet. I, I wish I could say I was, I was exaggerating. I really do. Um you know, the last couple nights, I've been up since 3 o'clock straight. I have not been able to go back to sleep. Um, so Friday morning, you know, yeah, I had, was up since 3 o'clock, and I was stewing by the time that bus showed up, you know. I mean, how can you not? Um, you know, how can you not? I just, again, you don't like your position, go find another job, you know, Um or request a transfer, I don't know, e figure it out, but anyways, so I uh, chewed them out, you know, I got up on the bus, and I immediately asked if it was discrimination, what more am I supposed to think at this point, um, really, I found out, you know, 
there may have been some issues with the dog being up on the bus. Still discrimination. Um, you're afraid of dogs. You don't like the dog. I don't give a flying fuck. You take care of my child. That's your job. You can ignore that dog. You don't have to touch the dog. Take care of my child. The dog doesn't get up and get in your face. You know, I've never had any complaints from anybody else. Um, so, yeah. So, we are meeting with a new bus team later on today. Um, I, or I'm i playing chauffeur right now, which is completely fine. Um, I will probably have to get up on the bus, you know, a day or two and help train train the bus driver and the bus aide as far as the dog's concerned. And, and really all I do in the mornings is I, I get up on the bus, lay a towel down for the, the dog to lay on, attach her to the wheelchair. There's there's chains that attach to her pinch collar. Um, she lays right down on the floor. Yeah, she moves around. She's a dog. Step over her. She, she doesn't stand up when you step over her. She's been trained, you know. Um doesn't mean you still ne get to neglect my child, you know. Um, so anyways, you know, that's that hopefully is, is done. It's being taken care of. Um, not the way that I wanted it to happen. I was obviously, you know, working with the school, working with transportation, working with the bus team. You know, I thought that it, maybe it was more of like a training issue. Um, laziness. You know what? It just comes down to sheer laziness. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, real quick, I do want to give an update on the wheelchair uh, modifications to be able to tilt the seat backward or to be able to lay the seat down. Um, called the insurance company. I know for a fact that the script was um, sent into them. We went into court July 15th uh, over the phone. And it was submitted the following week by the wheelchair seating company. Um, nothing on file. Nothing on file. And I know that they've even called and talked to them. So this is just, you know, another little tidbit of the struggles. Um, again, no one wants to do their jobs. And it's very frustrating uh, to be on the recipient end where... You're waiting and waiting and waiting. You're calling and calling and calling. You're getting frustrated. You you know you still have all these needs. You still need all these services, and there's nothing. Um, anyways, so with that being said, <laughs> I hope you all have a great day. Um, keep smiling. You know, keep doing those little things. You know, to to improve yourself and improve others. You know, um, doesn't take a lot of time. Be kind to yourself and love one another. Thank you.